I do want to thank Senator Thune and Senator Nelson, Senator Inhofe and others, who did do something good today, which is to allow us to vote uh, to make sure that we have the head of the uh, Railway Administration. Finally, after eight months, Sarah Feinberg got a vote, and, and it's very important, and I'm glad all this wrangling that we had uh, back and forth led to that happy situation because we need her in place. And frankly, we need her in place to oversee this positive train control. I want to quote what she stated. She stated that worries of a train exploding in the middle of, of a city have caused her sleepless nights. This is an administrator who cares deeply about her role in safety. Um, there was an article that was written by someone today that said, I stood alone in my opposition to moving forward with a three to five year extension and taking that <coughs> extension out of the underlying bill and tacking it onto a three week uh, highway bill extension. I want to point out that I did not stand alone and I do not stand alone. Uh, Senator Blumenthal is hoping to come here later and make his uh, remarks about the fact that he opposed this. I speak here for Senator Feinstein, my great colleague, my senior colleague who actually wrote the original legislation because these crashes were occurring. And I want to read a little bit from Senator Gillibrand, who asked me, she is um, on a train headed to a funeral for a firefighter in New York. And this is her statement, quote, after so many preventable railroad tragedies that have led to loss of life, it is an insult to the families who have lost loved ones to let the rail lobby slip a multi-year positive train control delay into a three-week extension. The rail industry has purposely dragged its feet in meeting the safety requirements, and now Congress is quietly aiding them further. It is without debate that positive train control saves lives. The railroads must work as quickly as they can to implement this life-saving technology so that the millions of Americans who commute by rail every day can do so safely, and Congress needs to do its job to hold the rail industry accountable. I ask unanimous consent that her statement be placed in the record at this time. Without objection. Um, as I said, when um, Senator McConnell offered the unanimous consent request, I think it is a terrible precedent to place a major safety uh, I, I won't call it a repeal, I would say rollback, a safety rollback on a three-week extension of the Highway Trust Fund. It, 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 it just, it isn't right. And I'm very grateful to the Washington Post for writing a very strong statement, I would say article, uh, about uh, what happens when you don't have positive train control on a train. Positive train control is technology that allows the train to slowly come to a stop if there's a real problem, such as another train crossing or a car. And in 2008, this is when we really moved on positive train control. A horrific accident occurred in Chatsworth, California, where a Metrolink passenger train and a Union Pacific freight train collided. It was due to a distracted engineer. This preventable accident resulted in the deaths of 25 people and injury to 135 others. Friends, we're not talking about some scientific experiment here. We're talking about real life where trains collide. It, real people die, get hurt. And I've met some of the families. And afterwards, uh, Senator Feinstein and I got together, and she was great, and it was great to work with her. And we passed the Rail Safety Improvement Act of 2008, mandating the installation of positive train control on major passenger, commuter, and freight rail lines by the end of this year, 2015. Um, again, I speak for her in my remarks. She is distressed that the 2015 deadline would be uh, extended as much as it was 
without a chance to really look at the details in the conference, um, which we hope to have soon. For more than 45 years, 45 years, the National Transportation Safety Board, the NTSB, has advocated PTC technology. This isn't something new, but it wasn't until 2008 that Senator Feinstein and I got the legislation done. And, and let me say this, NTSB is amazing. They are the ones who show up after horrible crashes of rail, of planes, and they are the ones who make really important safety recommendations. Well, actually, they work with the FAA. So they are the ones who come forward after an accident. Yes, they do the investigation and they make the recommendations. Now, what they said, if, if we had put PTC in all those years ago, 146 accidents or derailments could have been avoided with implementation of the PTC. And at least 300 fatalities and 7,000 injuries could have been prevented. And since the Chatworth, California accident, 14 PTC preventable accidents or derailments have occurred. So let's be clear, people are dying, they're being injured because we don't have positive train control. Now, the good news, the great news for my state is Metrolink and Caltrain already have put PTC on. And I know Amtrak has put it on certain of their runs. So it is happening. But some of the railroads are dragging their feet. And they have every excuse in the book. And some of the reasons, I think, do need our attention. For example, there's problems with spectrum. There's problems with right of, rights of way. We can work on that. But we need, as Senator Blumenthal said, instead of giving these three-year delay, there need to be what he calls metrics so that we can ascertain before they get all this time, what are they doing? Are we going to be faced here in this body in years to come with more requests for delay? Well, if we're not really looking over the shoulder of the railroads, the answer is clearly yes. They don't want to save the money. And by the way, the cost-benefit ratio on this is overwhelming. It's overwhelming. Um, I said before rhetorically, you know, it, it's very interesting that the only piece of freestanding legislation that was pulled out of the bill and placed on this three-week extension was this delay in positive train control safety. And nothing else, nothing else. And this was cherry-picked, nothing else. I mean, I worked with several senators uh, because one of my constituents, uh, Mrs. <coughs> Hauk, lost two daughters who rented a car to go on vacation. They were in their 20s. And the car was under recall, but the agency rented it to them anyway. It exploded. They died. And, and Mrs. Howe couldn't believe that we didn't have a law that said, you can't rent a car that's under recall. And I bet if I asked anybody, any stranger to me, do you think you're allowed to rent a car that's under recall? They'd say, of course not. Well, you can. And I have fought for years, and I've gotten help from Senator Schumer. Uh, Senator McCaskill actually got the bill passed. I'm very grateful to her. And that's in the underlying bill. Why didn't we take that out and put it on immediately so this can go into effect immediately? I think that the Washington Post gave us what they think as they wrote a story a very important story in the front page. Was it yesterday or the day before? Yes. Yesterday? Monday. Monday. I, I, I want to just say we all know that there are special interests here. And by the way, I, I like to work with the railroads because they do a lot of good things. They are very powerful. They are very strong. They have a very powerful lobby 
It is not a Republican lobby or a Democratic lobby. It's a lobby that covers everybody. And let me tell you what the Washington Post article notes. Quote, rail safety has never been a more pressing issue than it is today. So far, the people who have died in the U.S. could have, those deaths could have been prevented, and that could change in dramatic fashion. The number of rail cars carrying flammable material in the United States has grown from 9,500 seven years ago to 493,000. Let me say that again. The number of rail cars carrying flammable material in the U.S. has grown from about 9,000 seven years ago, 9,000 tank cars, to 493,000 tank cars. Now, just imagine what happens when this flammable material is involved in a collision. We know we've seen the balls of toxic fire. Seven trains have derailed this year alone, and their contents are exploding. Now, I understand the pleas for a delay. That's why I offered a one-year delay to my friend, the chairman of the Commerce Committee. I offered him a one-year delay. Nobody can tell me that a one-year delay wouldn't work for now. We can look at it in the conference. If we need to extend it, fine. No. No, we weren't able to get it. And to me, the only answer that keeps coming back is special interest earmark provision. Special interest earmark provision. Because it's the only provision that benefits one special interest that was put on this three-week extension. Some people say, why do you care so much? The House voted by voice vote. You know what? They were wrong. They shouldn't have. They shouldn't have put it on this bill. This was put on by the House. And it was wrong, wrong, wrong. Now, when I spoke with my chairman, my really good friend, Senator Inhofe on the floor, I did say I am so pleased at the way we're moving in terms of the underlying bill. And I believe we will have that bill. And I believe we will have that bill next week. Then why on earth did we have to take this out? We're moving this bill forward. We didn't have to pluck out one of the provisions. I, I just don't understand it other than what the Washington Post uh, wrote in their story. I mean, I got to say, there's 60,000 plus bridges that are uh, deficient, structurally deficient, Mr. President, they're in your state, they're in my state. Why didn't they pull out a couple of the worst bridges and say, fix those bridges? No, all they did was pull out a provision that the railroads wanted, not a provision that, the, that commuters want, not a safety provision that will save lives. It's very, very discouraging. Now, we all know about the Amtrak uh, crash. And I'm going to show you a picture of that. Uh, it was splayed all across the paper. The, imagine, and, and I don't see it here in my uh, talking points. Do we have it in there? An Amtrak train from Philadelphia. Uh, this is a picture of a photo. This is a photo of a destroyed Amtrak train in Philadelphia. And we all know the disaster uh, that occurred there. And this could have been prevented. And as a matter of fact, if I remember rightly, and correct me if I'm wrong, Bettina, if you know this, they were about to put positive train control on this stretch. Very, they were getting ready to do it. Just look at this. And the suffering and the deaths Needless, if there was positive train control and if another train was coming, simply slow down that train and, and automatically uh, avoid such a disaster as this. So, um, Mr. President, I'm passionate about transportation. I'm passionate about safety. 
I know my colleagues are, but we just had a very different view about this. And I can only say, if anything good came out of this, it was the fact that we now have an administrator of the Federal Railway Administration. I really think that was good, because I feel better now knowing that someone who really cares about this is officially now uh, been given the power to assert her authority. And, and I, I look forward to working with uh, Senator Thune as we move the underlying bill through. He knows how I feel. I want to thank him uh, because, you know, he, he waited around until we had reached an agreement. I appreciate that because otherwise we could have had a complete shutdown uh, of, the, uh, of the entire highway program. We averted that because with respect uh, for our differences, uh, we work together all day and having the administrator in place. And I want to thank Senator Nelson and his staff, as well as Senator Thune's staff. Having that done, um, you know, for me, is, is, is something that means a lot, and means a lot for safety across the board. I hope we won't be doing this in the future. I hope regular order will prevail. I hope we won't be pulling out important pieces out of other bills and passing them as standalone bills, you know, when we're about to uh, when we're up against a deadline, I don't think it's the right way to govern. I don't think it's good governance. And, 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 and I think a lot of my colleagues feel the same way. But this is behind us, and now we're going to work together. We're going to never take our eyes off this positive train control. We're going to make sure the railroads are stepping up, doing the right thing. And by the way, some of them have. I told you two, my railroads have been fantastic. They've put it all in place. They've met the deadline. And there are many others that are close to meeting the deadline. But there are too many that are hiding behind uh, excuses, and, and some who have real reasons why they haven't moved forward. And I hope that they're watching this today, because uh, I'm not going away. None of us are going away. Uh, we're going to be watching this carefully and making sure that this deadline is really a deadline, not some kind of political cover so that the railroads can get out of doing what they have to do to save lives. When we take these jobs, that is our overwhelming responsibility, to protect and defend our people, whether it's abroad or here at home. And I want to, again, thank my staff, Senator Thune's staff, Senator Nelson's staff, Senator Blumenthal's, Feinstein's, um, I hope I'm not leaving anybody out, Gillibrand's, uh, Murphy, um, for getting us to a place where we're accepting this with a heavy heart, uh, we're moving on, and we're thankful that we do have now in place an administrator, a wonderful, wonderful administrator of Federal Railway Administration. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. I would yield the floor.